Next up is Dr. Maria Druzhkova, and she generously offers to for everybody else to call her Dr. Maria. It's a miracle I got that. She works with diverse learners in situations such as early algebra and calculus with family groups, mathematical circles, and open online courses. She describes herself and others describe her as a researcher, a developer, and a progressor. Dr. Maria? Hey everyone, I am happy to be here with you today. I love Idea Spark. There are beautiful slides, meaningful concepts, and very fun people. So let me hijack all that and talk about teaching children mathematics. <laughs> Don't cringe just yet. We have a lot to celebrate in mathematics education, even though you probably know at least one Johnny who can't count. In the big scheme of things, we are doing great in math. There is more mathematics, engineering, science, technology than ever before in history, but still there is a lot of pain. When I tell people I do mathematics, <laughs> they cringe because they have been tortured with math. So before I can talk, I have to say, I'm very sorry as a mathematics educator if you've been hurt. <laughs> and then sometimes they share their grief stories in math. Jen is an art teacher back in fourth grade. She had trouble with time tests, so she was placed in a remedial class, told she was bad in math. She's had math anxiety ever since. But she hopes her students can see mathematics as beautiful. Charlie is a programmer, but he wanted to study quantum physics to understand the meaning of the universe. He did fine in math courses up to graduate school. Then it turned out science is about posing problems, not just solving them. So he hopes his kids can find meaning in mathematics early on. Alice is a homeschooler. Her homeschooling is fun. They do field trips, projects, experiments. But for math, they do worksheets and lectures because that's the only math she has ever seen. There's got to be more to children's mathematics, but what? There are children out there who work in fusion reactors at 13 or 14. <laughs> but for millions of others, things go wrong, and they end up anxious and disempowered in math. They can be as brilliant as Jen and Charlie, and still they hit the wall. This year, a woman got the Fields Medal. It's like the Nobel Prize for math. And it made huge news because it happened the first time in history. Most girls fall off the math track somewhere in their early adolescence, then smart moms like Alice name mathematics as their number one worry for the kids. So Alice, Jen, Charlie, want better mathematics for their children, but when they try to make mathematics better, they fall back into their own bad experiences and have the vicious cycle of passing on the hurt to the next generation. How can we change that? Step one, acknowledge that better means different. Doing the same thing over and over again brings the same bad old results. So our mathematics must not only be beautiful, meaningful, and fun. It must be different. And I say our mathematics because this is crucial. This is what's really all about. What good are perfect ripe grapes if you can't reach them or if you hate grapes? So our tastes in mathematics are as different as our tastes in food. There are thousands of ways to cook dinner or to reach mastery in math. And step one, Acknowledge better means different. And here is step two for every teacher, parent, and student. Make math your own. Reject intellectual consumerism and just say, math is what I make of it. Math is mine to make. We had this uh, math circle, a play and learn group for kids and parents. We did function machines from our book. And uh, a little girl came up to me and said, Maria, who makes mathematics? And she jumped up and down for joy like this, because I told her, you do. You make mathematics. <laughs> so this spring, The Atlantic published an interview with me called Five-Year-Olds Can Learn Calculus. Why calculus? Why with five-year-olds? Because 
Young calculus is different. There are no tests, no curricula, none of that. So people are free to make their own calculus for their five-year-olds. For example, children love to play with limits and infinity. They can make fractals, self-similar structures where parts resemble the whole. And you can ask such fun questions about fractals, such as, do infinitely many parts always take up infinitely large space? Children can explore integrals with Lego or Minecraft. Now, integrals are immediately meaningful for kids because they can build shapes out of shapes, like this multiplication tower. But also, integrals have a lot of science and math applications. <laughs> this simple toy is called mirror books with two mirrors and duct tape. You can make it. Guess how many I have here? And uh, children can make beautiful designs with mirror books, but also they can explore infinitesimal angles and rotational symmetry. So that article, five-year-olds can learn calculus, got wide resonance, got translated into Japanese, Italian, Turkish, and got thousands of comments. And I thought people would attack me for saying such a thing, that five-year-olds can learn calculus. But turns out people love the idea and want to join our movement. Nobody went on a warpath, not even on Reddit or Slashdot. <laughs> That's uh, people, I was surprised. Many people came out to me and said, oh, I thought my geeky family was the only ones doing that early lovely mass thing. <laughs> That's because People believe, as we do, that in the natural mass community, children can have very, very different mathematics, that mathematics can be beautiful, meaningful, and fun, and that mathematics can be what you make of it.